There's a lot of talk about offshore banking on the internet, and I'm being generous when I say that about 80% of the stuff out there is totally useless. So let's skip the fluff and get down to the three things that everyone actually wants to know about, including how much money it takes to open offshore, which countries to bank in, and which banks to apply to. That's what I'm gonna give you in this video. And in case you wanna know who I am and why you should even listen to me, my name is Chris and I'm the head of banking relationships at Global Banks. We help individuals and companies open bank accounts all around the world, including in top offshore banking jurisdictions. And I just wanna make something really clear before we start. I'm not gonna be talking about opening accounts in shady backwater countries. If you wanna open a bank account in a place like Belize with 1500 bucks or an account in Puerto Rico with $5,000, you should pause this video right now and go watch my video on where not to bank. Then come back here and I'll help you open accounts in the right countries. And yes, this is all about opening accounts 100% remotely. So let's get started by talking about everyone's favorite topic, money. And what I'm really talking about here is how much money you need to deposit to open a bank account offshore. And there are five main deposit levels that I'm gonna run you through in this video. And like I said, the first level is for anyone that wants low quality banking hubs, which we don't suggest. And those get started around $1,500 and it goes up to the $5,000 range. But as far as we're concerned, the entry point to start accessing any actual offshore bank is the second level, which we're gonna discuss. And that's between $5,000 and $10,000 depending on the countries that you're considering and the type of account you want to open. But really, if you're only looking to open with $5,000, you're probably not gonna get a ton of benefits from offshore banking. So unless you have a very specific reason that you're looking to bank offshore, like accessing multi-currency accounts, or because you desperately need an international account because you live in a third world country. But if that's not you, what we typically suggest is waiting until you can reach the third level, which is between $25,000 and $50,000 because there you can get access to a much wider range of banks. Now, even between 25 and $50,000, you're still at the starting point of offshore banking. And in most cases, it's not until you reach 150 to 250,000, which is our fourth level, that you can really start to take advantage of a lot of the cross-border benefits that offshore banking offers. After that, you reach level five, which starts stepping into private banking. And here we're looking at 500,000 to $3 million as your range, depending on the countries and the specific banks that you're interested in. So those are the five deposit ranges I want you to be considering when you're thinking about where to open offshore, which takes us to the next topic, countries. I've already said, don't open in Belize, Puerto Rico. I'll also add the Cook Islands to that list, unless you have a Cook Islands Trust, in which case you might not have any other options. But generally speaking, we also suggest avoiding popular structuring hubs, the kind of countries that offer excellent incorporation options, but they're very limited in terms of banking places like the BVI, which is probably the most obvious example. And we also suggest that most people avoid banking in residency jurisdictions as well. The UAE and Malta are two examples. Though if you're a resident in either of these countries, then it obviously makes sense to have some level of local transactional banking there. So those are a few of the places that you generally shouldn't open accounts. But where should you bank? And the obvious answer is it's going to depend. But that feels like a cop out. And I do wanna leave you with some actionable advice on places that you can start considering for opening accounts. And the easiest way to do that is to give you a few examples based on the deposit levels that we just covered. Again, I'm skipping the 1500 to 5000 level because frankly, the banks that offer those deposit levels in the offshore world should be avoided. So starting with 5000 to 10000. Here, we're talking about banking in places like the Isle of Man and Panama, two very different banking hubs with two very different banking sectors. The Isle of Man is gonna have a lot of restrictions in terms of citizenship and residency, while Panama is gonna be more expensive in terms of fees and slower in terms of opening. But in both places, you will be able to open accounts as a foreign non-resident remotely. And if you're an American, Panama is a good dollarized option that you can reach with direct flights from many US cities. Now, next up in the $25,000 to $50,000 level, here we're looking at places like Jersey, which is home to a handful of offshore banks that do accept some, though not all, non-resident foreigners. And the key to opening in Jersey is determining whether you can get in with your citizenship and residency combination, which is becoming more challenging. On the other hand, if you're not a US person or an American, you might wanna consider US banking at this level instead. And with $25,000 to $50,000, you can start opening in the US remotely as a non-resident. Even certain US LLCs and certain foreign companies can start to open in the US at this level, if that's of interest to you. But once you start breaking into the $150,000 to $250,000 level, here we're starting to look at a much wider range of countries and banks that you can access. And two really good examples at this level include Singapore and the UAE. 
Now, Singapore is especially interesting for anyone with ties to Asia, especially residency. And that's because you'll be able to start accessing a much wider range of products and services, investments, and plus anyone that opens here will likely be banking with some of the best banks anywhere in the world. On the other end, the UAE, it's a bit of a different beast. Like I said earlier, we view the UAE as more of a residency jurisdiction. And for that reason, we do typically suggest that foreigners, including expats that reside in the UAE, consider banking in other hubs instead. But if you are a non-resident, especially with ties to the region, and you are looking for a stable banking hub with strong banks and a solid regulator, then the UAE can still be worth looking at for opening accounts. Now let's talk about that 500,000 to $3 million range. And the reason that this range is so wide is because we're talking about private banking. In more traditional private banking hubs, places like Switzerland, you can get started with an initial deposit of 500,000. And the same is true in basically any other European private banking hub. Though of course there are a handful of banks where you can start lower, say the $300,000 range. At the upper end of the range, 3 million, you're looking at private banking in places like Singapore, certain US private banking options. And of course there are plenty of private banks in places like Switzerland and Liechtenstein and other European hubs that do require you to come in at this level as well. And that's a really important point. It's not just about the country. It's also about the bank that you end up choosing. So let's dive into the next important point that everyone wants to know about, which is which bank to open with. Now, there are a lot of banks out there that are just okay. And there are a lot of banks out there that are excellent, but even excellent banks might not be okay for you because of your citizenship, your deposit, your transaction flows, investment goals, or other objectives that you might have when opening the account. And that's why breaking down individual banks in a generic sense, it's so difficult because one bank could be a great fit for a certain client profile, but totally not supportive of many others. So to help you navigate your options, I'm gonna give you four rapid fire considerations that will help you choose a bank that meets your specific profile and your goals. First, you need to open at banks that are comfortable with your citizenship and residency combination. If you're an American, that's a smaller list than most people. If you're Canadian, it's a surprisingly short list as well. But the way you determine which banks are comfortable with your citizenship and residency is, you ask them or you ask people you know with the same citizenship and residency, that bank offshore. Now, the second consideration is something that we've already discussed and that is deposit. And this one's pretty straightforward. If you can only deposit $100, don't bank offshore. If you can only deposit $25,000, don't try to bank in premier or private banking hubs that demand higher deposits. Basically, stick to the countries that I already shared where you can meet the deposit levels that banks are looking for. Now, the third consideration is transaction activity. Are you gonna be sending and receiving transactions to or from specific regions in the world? Say Latin America, Asia, Europe, or even the US or Canada. If so, banks in those regions are going to be more comfortable supporting your transaction activities. So make it easier for the bank and make your life easier by applying to banks in the same regions where you plan on engaging in banking and transactions. And the fourth consideration is opening requirements. Are you gonna be able to meet them? And in a lot of cases, this means proving your residency, proving your source of income, proving your wealth, as well as providing proof of address and bank statements from a specific country. And in most cases, requirements are going to vary from country to country and bank to bank. So you will need to contact the banks and ask for their specific requirements in order to start the process and determine if you can qualify for an account. But if you wanna skip the line and just have your own team of banking experts help you navigate the entire process and decide which countries and banks are best suited to your specific goals and your client profile, we can do that too. Just go to globalbanks.com forward slash apply to see if you qualify for our account opening services. Though before you do, you might wanna see if you even need an offshore bank account, which is exactly what I walk you through in this video right here. I'll see you over there right now.